Okay, another parenting tool that I really like is compromises. Now, when I first learned about compromises, I thought I do not want to negotiate with my kids. I just want them to listen to me when I ask them to do something and I want them to obey. Of course, that was kind of pie in the sky parenting because if anybody's ever parented a kid for more than five minutes, you know that that's not how it goes all of the time. And especially when our kids are struggling. So when our kids are having a hard day, um, they may not be as likely to, when you say, go get your shoes on, it's time to get in the car. Um, they may not be as likely to listen to you. And so you got to have those tools that you can use. Now compromises, what I love about a compromise is that it gives our kids a voice. They feel heard. And I will tell you as a mom who has teenagers and adult children and also little kids that as we've used these, we started using compromises years and years and years ago when our now teenagers were very little. And so when we started using compromises, they were little and the, the compromise was, can I have five more minutes of screen time? Can I have two more minutes in the bathtub? Can I have, um, can I eat three more bites of my dinner? And those were the types of compromises. But now as we have kids who are driving, who are going out, who are hanging out with friends, the compromise is, can I be home at 1130 instead of my 11 o'clock curfew? Can I, but they, they ask, instead of just showing up late, what happens is they know that their voice will be heard. They understand that we are going to listen to them and be reasonable with them and that we are actually going to um, consider what they have to say. Because for years and years and years and years, we have considered what they had to say. Even if it was something as simple as, can I have five more minutes on my video game or can I have two more minutes to play in the bathtub? So if you have little kids, Put in the work now, give them the voice now, and I promise when they become teenagers, it's going to pay off and you're going to see that they really do see that you're going to give them an option, that you're going to listen to them and that it's not just my way or the highway, right? They feel like they have a voice. Now, sometimes they say, can I have a compromise? I say, you need to be home at 11 o'clock tonight. And they say, can I have a compromise? And I say, unfortunately tonight, I can't give you a compromise because we have to get up really early in the morning and I need you to get a good night's sleep, right? Legitimate reason that I need you to be home. The legitimate reason that I can't do a compromise tonight. And my kids accept it because for years and years and years, we have been listening to what they had to say. And as often as possible, we say yes to their compromise. Now, when my kids were little, this is kind of how it went. I need you to turn off the video game. Um, it's time to get ready for bed. And then the flailing and the screaming and the, I don't want to turn it off. This isn't fun. You're no, you're no fun. You're so mean. Why do you hate it when I play video games? I mean, all the things that our kids would say. And once I had started practicing compromises with them, then when they started doing that, I'd say, oh, it sounds like you're asking me for a compromise. And immediately they were triggered by, oh, I remember we talked about this because we would practice these outside of the moment. I didn't just use them in the moment when they were flailing on the ground. So we had practiced compromises. They knew what it meant to compromise because we'd done it a few times. And so when they started flailing, I would say, oh, it sounds like you're asking me for a compromise. And most of the time, nine times out of 10, they would say, oh, yes. Can I finish this level that I'm on, on my video game? And then I'll get ready for bed. And I would say, okay, so you're gonna finish the level you're on. Now, if it takes more than about five minutes, we're going to have to go ahead and turn it off. They'd say, okay. So they would finish their level of the video game. And then usually there was a little bit of, but can I just, just one more thing? I'd say, oh, remember we had a compromise. It's time to turn it off. Would you like to turn it off? Or would you like me to turn it off for you? And they would turn it off. And then we'd move on to the next thing because you don't want to give another compromise. So it's not like, oh, can I have a compromise? Can I have five more minutes? Oh, can I have a compromise? Can I get five more minutes? It's not multiple compromises. We've got a compromise and we both stick to what our deal is. I've agreed to give you five more minutes. You've agreed to turn it off after five more minutes. And we can use compromises in so many situations from the time they're little. My kids were 
some of them were two or three when they started using the word compromise. Now, I have lots of friends that use compromises and don't use the word compromise, but instead we'll say, let's make a deal or something like that. We just chose to use the word compromise because it felt like a new and a different thing. Um, and, and our kids really liked picking up on that, but you have to practice it ahead of time. You also need to get them to verbalize what their part of the deal is, right? Because otherwise they don't work. And our kids did know, we have told them that if, you know, if they can't handle, if they can't live up to their end of the deal, then we won't be able to use compromises anymore. And they don't want that to happen because they love being able to have a compromise. They love having their voice heard and they love being able to be part of the decision making. Again, it's really a way to get our kids, we we get them to the place we want them to go, but we give them a voice in the process. And that's so valuable for our kids to know that they are seen and they are heard by us as the parents. We're still the authority, we're still in charge, but they know that we will listen to them, we will hear them out, even if we have to say no.